You can see that some of the adsorption isotherms contain some loops where the line branches off depending on whether the material is adsorbing or desorbing. Those are called hysteresis loops. First, what is hysteresis and why does it form a loop on some of the isotherms? Hysteresis is the phenomena in which a material's history affects how that material reacts to new stimuli. This concept can be applied multiple ways in a variety of fields. For adsorption, the amount adsorbed will be different even though the relative pressure is the same. They will differ depending on whether the amount adsorbed gas is increasing or decreasing at the time. This creates two branches, as well as two closure points, on the isotherm graph. The branches and the closure points create what we call the hysteresis loop. For isotherms with no hysteresis loops, the mechanism of absorption and desorption is the same, just in different directions. Thus, they are described as reversible. But when there is a hysteresis loop, the pathways are different. This is likely to occur when the pore width is greater than the critical width, which depends on the size of the adsorbate. When that happens, the gas component condenses along the adsorption branch and evaporates along the desorption branch. As the pore is absorbing the gas, a monolayer is created along the walls of the pores. Increasing the relative pressure of the gas, multilayers are formed and eventually condenses. The vapor in the pores condense even though it is below the saturation vapor pressure. What happens is called capillary condensation. The narrow size of the pores, akin to capillaries, force the vapor molecules to interact, increasing the van der Waals forces between each molecule, allowing the vapor to condense. When the condensate evaporates along the disruption branch, it has an assumed totally different interface geometry with the gaseous phase, thus creating a different pathway for the disruption. These added mechanisms affect the thermodynamic equilibrium, thus creating a hysteresis. Two possible states at the same conditions, just with a different history. Adsorption hysteresis is generally associated with adsorbents with mesopores. For micropores, molecular filling and emptying follows the same mechanism, but the size of mesopores generally allow for capillary condensation and evaporation to occur. Hysteresis is a function of pressure and temperature, as well as pore size and structure. Increasing pressure means hysteresis shifts, while increasing temperature means hysteresis shrinks. At a critical hysteresis temperature, the hysteresis loop disappears. With different pore configurations as well as different adsorbate and adsorbent types, multiple hysteresis loop types are known. There are six kinds of hysteresis loops. Four of these were identified in the original 1985 IUPAC classification, the other two being added later. The first loop, type H1, is composed of steep adsorption and desorption branches, with a plateau in the adsorbed amount at high relative pressures. The steep and narrow loop is a sign of a delayed condensation on the adsorption branch. This type of loop is associated with materials with a narrow distribution of uniform mesopores. Imagine them shaped like cylinders. In this case, the simple pore structure this type is commonly associated with has no effect on the loop. In type H2, only one of the branches is steep. As such, H2 is split further to two types. A steep desorption branch, that of type H2A, may indicate pore blocking in a narrow pore neck size distribution, or it may indicate that evaporation is due to cavitation. Cavitation is a formation of bubbles due to forces acting on the liquid. In this case, the force is changes in pressure. When cavitation occurs, the bubble appears in the body of the pore, thus leaving condensate at the neck of the pore. Pore blocking is the opposite. It occurs when a wide pore body only has access to the outer surface through a narrow neck, a structure also known as an ink bottle pore shape. When the ink bottle is filled with the condensate, which then evaporates, the condensate at the neck evaporates first, leaving the pore body filled until the condensate at the neck empties at a low relative pressure. Meanwhile, if the adsorption branch is steep, like in type H2B, it indicates pore blocking in a larger pore neck size distribution than with type H2A. Type H3 hysteresis loops is usually found in absorption of nonpolar gases in clays and aggregates of other platy particles. Its two main features is a low closure point on the desorption branch and the sharp uptake at high relative pressures. Overall, it is similar to the type II absorption isotherm, with the deviation attributed to the non-rigidity of the adsorbent, as well as a delayed condensation. Type H4 is somewhat similar to type H3. The key difference is the higher uptake of adsorbates at low partial pressures, which is associated with the micropores filling up first, 
then behaving similarly to the type H3 on the relatively small non-micropores part of the adsorbent. This loop is given by many activated carbons and some nanoporous adsorbents. The last one, type H5, is associated with adsorbents with pore structures that include both open and partially blocked mesopores. For example, plugged hexagonal templated silicas.